Hello, my filmmaking friends, and welcome to another episode of Filmed in Utah. We have so much stuff going on today, I had to write it all down, otherwise I'd forget it. But first off, we have John Moyer, and he's going to be talking about a short film, Disjointed Custody. Now, you want to talk about people who have been going through a divorce, having a really rough time. This takes it to a whole new level. Now, the other cool part is Chris Thompson. You may have heard about this guy up north. He does Bad Arnie, but he also has connections with the Itsy Bitsy Spider. So we're gonna take a little behind the scenes look as to what happens to make these two shows that are getting a huge audience online. So if you wanna learn how to make your video go viral, you might wanna be taking some notes from Chris because these guys are making it happen up north. Also, we're, I'm visiting the Resistance Movement premiere up at the Jordan Commons, and we're meeting with all the cool filmmakers up there. And now that's coming up as well as a contest at the very end of the show, so be sure to pay attention because there will be a quiz. I'm Warren Workman, and you're watching Filmed in Utah. Have a seat, Tommy. Sweetie. Sweetie, Mommy and Daddy, we love you very, very much. Very much. Uh, but sometimes... Sometimes... Sometimes Mommies and Daddies stop loving each other. Or even liking each other. That's because they start liking other people entirely too much. You were emotionally unavailable to me. It's because I was working to pay for all of this, none of which you helped for. I was raising your son! How are $150 lunches three times a week with your friends on my Amex card considered raising our son? Because the last time I checked, Del Giorgio's didn't serve chicken nuggets. Your mother ever take you to a place called Del Giorgio's for lunch? No. $150. You realize how much chicken nuggets that will buy? Our kid might wind up fat, but at least he's bonding with his mom. your mommy and daddy are getting a divorce. So we've got John Moyer here, and he actually, that, the clip you just saw was from Disjointed Custody. Disjointed Custody, that is correct. Now, uh, first off, people are going to want to see the end of this now, mm -hmm. because they, I only give them about a minute worth of footage. Tell me, uh, well, tell them a little bit about what the whole story is. Disjointed Custody is uh, the premise of two parents who, uh, they have one child, and they sit down and they're telling their child that they're getting a divorce. But in the process of the whole thing, it's not very amicable, it's not very polite, they're very catty with one another, mm -hmm. and angry with one another, and uh, playing out some of the things that parents have a proclivity to do in the process of going through a divorce. But uh, it escalates to some uh, very absurd concepts uh, in the film that I think actually are a reflection of the absurdity that people who go through a divorce uh, tend to go through. Now what's interesting is you're able to take a, a topic that's going to be very emotional for a lot of people um, when you're talking about yeah. separating and getting a divorce. You're able to compile it all down and actually have a conclusion in four minutes but you have people like Charlie Sheen who take 12 years to get yeah, divorced. I'll tell you what, I, I wish my divorce only took four minutes <laughs> but uh, no, I jest. Um, <laughs> Well, you know, the thing about that is, is the fact, you know, to the, to the point of, you know, sometimes it, it can take a little longer. Of course, in the state of Utah, you're required to actually take a parenting divorce class. Oh, that sounds right. So, well, that's another way to make a buck. Yeah, so that, that makes make sense. A buck, you have to pay for that. But that's actually where I got the inspiration. I'm very fortunate in the fact that I have a, uh, an amicable relationship with my ex-wife. Uh, it's certainly not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Amicable There's, is all you could really hope for, really. all you can hope for. There is a reason that we went through a divorce. But uh, it's funny, when I took the parenting divorce class, her car was in the shop. I actually let her borrow my car and she dropped me off with the kids to take the class and then pick me up. Um, but I'm sitting in there and there's some people that are just, I mean, very publicly, they're, they're very catty and they're, they're very bitter. And, and even just people that I see outside of that environment that are going through a divorce do some really, really um, mean things, say some really mean things that affect their kids. And mm -hmm. I wanted to be able to make a commentary on that and uh, package it in a way that I think would disarm people um, to deliver a very serious message. Now, l let's, let's forewarn our audience just a little bit. You guys know John as a comedian. He tours all over the place. Uh, you've probably seen his shows many times. Um, but this isn't necessarily a comedy. It, 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 in the traditional you know, sense. You know what's interesting? It's kind of like a Rorschach painting in some regards, because like you're looking at it, it's like, is this a chalice or two people kissing? We're not really sure what the perspective is here. But, you know, I, I think there's, there's a lot of trees that lead up to a forest in the end, if you will. <laughs> um, so, I, I, you know, I think it's one of those things that you have to watch the whole 
thing to be able to sit back and I've gotten some very, all the reaction has been extremely positive to the video, but people's perceptions of it are, are very different and that's, uh, that's been an interesting thing to, uh, to take a look at. And it's not like you're going to have to commit to a really long feature film no, to watch it's, this, it's what, you four can, minutes? You know what, you can pull it up in your phone while you're in the bathroom. That's the great thing about technology nowadays. You can actually watch the whole video during this interview and then rewatch the video again. This you, is like a little director's commentary. A little di that's exactly. <laughs> you can pull them up side by side next to each other. And that might be what you need to you do. Can do that. Now, John, where can they, can they find more information about you, your films, everything that you've been up to, and how to stalk you more or less? Well, of course, let's not forget johnmoyer.com. Uh, <laughs> all the information is available there. And uh, But uh, you can see Disjointed uh, Custody at johnmoyer.com. Or if you go to YouTube, it's uh, Disjointed Custody. Excellent. Can't ask for more than that. So take a look at Disjointed Custody. And when we come back, we've got more interviews with more fantastic filmmakers here in the state. You're watching Filmed in Utah. Tired of all those books that are piling up? Then get rid of those stacks and pick up the Dottie Cost ebook reader. With it, you'll get 300 classic books, 25 audiobooks, 10 pieces of music, and two audio conferences. The Dottie Cost ebook reader allows you to download hundreds of books from the internet and read them wherever and whenever you want. View videos, photos, and listen to your favorite music. Get a bonus leather carrying case with purchase. The Dottie Cost ebook reader for all. White Willow Reception Center, Utah Valley's premier full-service event center, specializing in affordable weddings, receptions, ceremonies, dinners, luncheons, catering, and fresh florals. Visit us online at whitewillowweddings.com. Enjoy music in the mountains every Sunday evening this summer. The Hotel Park City Summer Concert Series will run June 3rd to September 2nd, 6 to 9 p.m. These concerts are free to the public and feature a variety of music. Relax to live music outside at the Hotel Park City Summer Concerts. Advertising on Filmed in Utah is the affordable way to get your message out to thousands of local residents. Come see what affordable advertising options we have waiting for you on our website, filmedinutah.com. I'm Matt Thompson. I'm a musician, animator, and co-creator of the web series Bad Arnie. Kind of what led to me making the Itsy Bitsy Spider video. I was laid off and had a lot extra time on my hands and I was watching my one-year-old at the time and he, he, he really liked the song Itsy Bitsy Spider. It was the only thing to do to keep him calm when I was changing his diaper and eventually I got sick of singing it over and over again so I made this song. And 
eventually I thought, you know, I could actually make a little video out of this that he'd like a lot. And at the time, I didn't have any professional programs of any kind. I used Microsoft Paint to draw everything. Um, some old, old version of Adobe Premiere. So I made this video and my son liked it a lot and, you know, it really wasn't the best animation or anything like that. The first time I'd ever done anything even close to that and I put it on YouTube not having any idea that it would ever, you know, receive any views hardly at all or anything like that. And it just, you know, started kind of slow at first, but eventually it became the number one video that comes up when you type Itsy Bitsy Spider, and it's just recently passed 16 million views. From the success of Itsy Bitsy Spider and it doing so well and get so many views, I saw that this is really something that I could make a real profession out of. It could be a job for me just making these kids videos and so now that is my job to make these videos and my kids like them and lots of other people's kids enjoy them as well. The difference between my videos and some of the other popular children's videos that you can find on the web or on YouTube, lots of them are very kiddish and they don't really try anything new as far as music's concerned. It's all just kind of silly and and I don't necessarily have the best animation but I make up for it with having good music, rock and roll music, country music, rap music, things that keep the adult interested as well. And so then you're not just getting the kid watching these videos, you have the adult watching it alongside with their kid because they're enjoying it. future plans I have for my YouTube channel, not only do I want to keep these nursery rhymes, animations and songs coming out and working on that, I also want to continue with our children's show called Bad Arnie. It's kind of a web series we got going on and it's also doing pretty well. Hi, I'm Chris Thompson. I am the co-creator, uh, writer, and director for Bad Arnie. Hey, Arnie, are you excited to be here? Whoa! Can I see it? The idea for Bad Arnie came from, um, I saw the success that Matt was having with uh, his uh, Itsy Bitsy Spider and the other cartoons that he'd been making. And at the time, I had been going, I was going to school over the Salt Lake Community College to, for a film technician degree. And I was looking for something that I could use that with. And I had this idea for a puppet show that uh, could be, that I and my brother Matt could actually put together. With his talent and with my talent, I figured we could put them together and make something great. Oh no, where's Arnie? Oh. Arnie? Hi, I'm Ben Sant, and I'm one of the cinematographers for Bad Arnie, a local web series uh, put together by my lifelong friends, uh, Chris and Matt Thompson. Uh, Matt, get <laughs> off screen, please. Oh. Scene 8 Alpha, take 1, medium shots, Matt walking in, soft sticks. <clears throat> Bad Arnie started out as just a simple idea uh, by a group of high school friends uh, about, 50, about 10, 12 years ago. And from there, it was resurrected in the minds of Chris and Matt and has been brought forth to the world uh, via YouTube and other social net marketing and networking. And now here's our special guest. Hi everybody, I'm Officer Safety. And of course, again, as with Itsy Bitsy Spider, Matt's son Carson seems to be the great inspiration behind a lot of these videos that we make. He's a, a wild little boy, and a, I, I got a lot of the inspiration on what to teach, what kids need to learn at that certain age. That's basically where Bad Arnie came from. <laughs> Well, 
what does it take to make an episode of Bad Arnie? It takes quite a bit, actually. Uh, when we first started out, I had a lot of things I had to get together to make to get this uh, production to go. Uh, one of the things, main things, of course, was the puppets. Uh, Bad Arnie here. I had him made actually by a, a, a seamstress who actually makes puppets. And it was weird how I found out uh, about her because when I first started, I had no idea where you go to make a puppet. Um, and I had pitched this idea uh, to the rest of my family, and it was actually my mother, who was a, a lunch lady. She uh, knew someone that she worked with there who was another lunch lady who is actually a retired puppet maker. And so I talked with her and was able to create uh, Arnie and the rest of these puppets. Ah! Sorry, Arnie. Looks like we're playing tag. Tag. <laughs> After getting the puppets together, I had to get a, a production crew together as well. Uh, of course, used Matt, who uh, turned out to be the host of the show, and he also does the he also writes the music and does the animation for it as well. The other members of the production team are also Ben Sant, who is a local cinematographer. Uh, he's been a great help, and he's been there to shoot every single one of these episodes. You also use Grant Morgan and Daniel Schwager, who is a, script, a local script supervisor. There's also Kyle Calder, who's been apprenticing under Ben for the past year. And we're going to be using a lot more local talent here in Utah as we continue to make more episodes. Now after we, have our, we had our puppets and our production team together, we had to find a location to shoot all of this, and it turned out it uh, was Ben's basement. Now during this production we used green screen a lot and before I hadn't used green screen that much at all. i uh, done a few music videos with it and that was about it. So the learning curve on this was, was kind of high. But with uh, the help of uh, all the people in the, on the production team we were able to figure out what we needed. and It was a definitely a leap of faith and something a little bit different to where I'm shooting on a locked locked platform without making shots look beautiful up front in camera. I've never been a puppeteer or anything like that before, so I am down there straining my arms, trying to figure out exactly how this all works. Basically, my job is simply to light the scene appropriately and give Matt and Chris a good key so that when they get into After Effects and other post-production programs, that they're able to put in whatever they want and let the world of Bad Arnie come to life. Once upon a time, there was a kid named Mike. He had lots of friends and was fun to be around. Now after production is over, we get to move on to post-production, which is a whole new animal. Uh, I take all the footage into Adobe Premiere and edit the entire thing and kind of do a little prefabrication of my own where I kind of show Matt because he's the one who's really going to be animating everything and doing all of the keying. Um, and I just kind of show him exactly what I want. And then he takes that uh, edit that I do in Adobe Premiere and brings it into After Effects. And then he goes through and he animates everything, which is amazing. Um, I also do all of the artwork in Bad Arnie. And then I give him all of those Photoshop files that, so he can go through and, and animate each and every little thing that's going on in the background. And if you look closely at all of these different episodes, you'll see the great work that he's actually doing, whereas there's little things that are moving, little uh, objects that have a little bit of life to them because of him. The future of Bad Arnie may be uncertain right now, but as of today, we're going in the right direction. It has been taken off like a wildfire and continually to go more and more viral via YouTube and other free marketing and other networking sites that display video. Also, we look forward to continue to make great, just great videos for kids. With my brother and his family, with my nephews, we've come to watch a lot of children videos and it's, uh, it's, I think it's going to be great for people to have videos that they can watch with their kids and they won't get sick of after the 900th time watching it. 
we'd like to continue to keep offering you know these videos on YouTube for free for everyone to watch and for you know not just educational purposes but to enjoy and for entertainment as well and we're real excited with where that's going we love educating children we love educating the future and we love entertaining ourselves thank you for watching bad arnie Dashiell Wolf, last time we chatted, you were doing chick magnets. Now we're here on a totally different theme show yeah. with the resistance movement. First off, tell me a little bit about the show and what is your role? Well, we kind of went to a completely different, we went from North Pole to South Pole, just completely goofy to a very serious true story about World War II. Um, anyway, so this is, yeah, like I said, true story. It's based on three teenage boys in Germany who were German citizens at the time of uh, World War II, and they started a revolution against Hitler from within Germany. So it's an interesting perspective because you see a lot of um, outward, uh, a lot of outward efforts against Hitler. You rarely see stories of inward, you know, inside Germany trying to break out. I've got Catherine Moss here with me, and she directed the resistance movement. Now, what was this like? Uh, f first off, filming a stage play as a feature film and directing the whole thing. Were you directing more as a stage director or as a film director? Um, well, I, we, our whole rehearsal process was very much like a stage play. So we rehearsed it like a stage play, I mean, full on scenes, we rehearsed for a couple months, um, the actors came to rehearsals completely memorized, all that kind of thing. So the rehearsal process was very much like a stage play. Um, and then as far as the actual filming, um, uh, Nathan, my director of photography, is fantastic, um, and uh, it, it was a great combination of the two of us. My background is mostly theater, and his is mostly film. So, um, as far you know, I, it was a great combo for me to be able to tell him what I was going for, and then he could translate that for me into film language. So, now because everyone came so prepared, um, most film shoots take no less than three weeks. I mean, that's if you're rushing it. How long did it take for this film to be shot? Um, we actually shot this. This entire film in eight days. Eight days. Yeah. I didn't think that was humanly possible, <laughs> but a feature film in eight days. Now, was this because there was really just one location? Um, yeah, definitely the location thing helped um, because we didn't have to, and also it was all shot indoors, right. so we didn't have to worry about daylight, things like that. We could control the entire environment. Um, and then also, like you said, just because everyone was so prepared, I pushed them really hard in rehearsal so that by the time we got to filming, everyone knew what to do and it was it was already right there and ready to go. So. Well, I think you sold me on doing all my feature films of stage plays from now on <laughs> so that I don't have to spend more than eight days on the entire project. It was amazing. That was, sounds like my type of project right it, there. It was a crazy eight days, but it was uh, <laughs> but it was uh, it was awesome. And you know, there was just a great vibe there too because we were able to work so quickly and it was great for the energy as well. It was a lot of fun. 
Nathan Lee produced the resistance movement, and this is a very interesting take on traditional feature films, um, where normally you'll, you'll film on a location that's big, expensive budget. You guys went another route and filmed in a studio. Tell me, how is it to produce a studio feature versus an on-location type feature? Well, there's, there's challenges to both, honestly. Uh, the reason for the style of this and the reason why we shot it all as, you know, on stage and in the style we did is because it was originally based on a stage play. And we actually did very little adaptation to the original text and wanted to translate kind of the original creative intent of the stage play in a cinematic way to reach a broader audience. Um, and so that was kind of the initial creative push for it. And then lots of other things were, were great because of that. Fantastic. And then some of the people that I have seen in your film, a lot of local talent. Um, Lucas Milhouse, for example, who's been on our show many times. Dashiell Wolf, who was here with Chick Magnets. You, you just have a, a cornucopia of fantastic talent. What is it as, to you as a producer to use so much talent inside the state instead of looking elsewhere? Uh, to me, it's honestly, I wish I could say I was loyal to Utah talent. But the truth is, I'm loyal to good talent. And we found the good talent here in Utah. We didn't have to go anywhere else. If the good if talent, you know, you need good acting in a film, and if you've got it locally, you don't need to go elsewhere. We've got it here in Utah. I think you nailed it on the head. Thank you very much for your time there, You're Nathan. Welcome. And I hope you have a wonderful time at your premiere. Thank you much. <laughs> The 9-11 Memorial will honor my partner and the officers who responded that morning. It's for my brother. And my 343 brothers who didn't make it. It's about hope for the future. So we always remember September 11th. For my husband who never came home. And the first responders who saved my life. This shows the world that we can rebuild. That we are united and that we are strong because the best of humanity can overcome the worst hate. It's for all the heroes like my dad. This year, the National September 11th Memorial opens in New York City. Join us to honor, remember, and reunite. To learn more or to reserve your visit, go to 911memorial.org. Looking for these? You drive buzzed, it could be one very expensive ride. First, you gotta make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. I've been in circumstances in my life when I when I haven't had access to music. And that's been very difficult. But, but I, you know, I, I remember everything I've heard, so I can play it back. Well, that's going to do it for me on this episode of Filmed in Utah. But before we go, I have a fun little contest for you. If you can name the bad monkey in today's episode, you're going to win a copy of Human Works by Jean-Pierre Macoso. And this is a fantastic poet, and it's for free. You can pick it up at our studio. If you can answer our question again, which is, who is the bad monkey in today's episode? And you can actually find our studio information right below. But you answer that on our film, uh, Filmed in Utah fan page on Facebook. And that information is also in the descriptions below if you're watching this on YouTube. Or you could go to filmedinutah.com to get that information as well. 
Well, guys, that's going to do it for me on this episode. I'm Warren Workman, and until next week, keep filming, Utah.